and join the NACA post qualification workshop. This workshop is designed for members who've come through the qualification process, have become qualified, and are either out shopping, submitted for an, and looking for a property, have found a property, our property identified, and been submitted for NACA credit access, have been granted NACA credit access and are waiting to take your loan application, and members who have taken their loan application and who have an application at bank. And my goal is to give you broad information and tools to use anywhere in that process and to answer any questions you have. So um, if you have questions, if you'll please just either type the question into the question box, or you can raise your hand using the feature and I'll unmute you and I'd re and I, which I prefer so we can have open dialogue uh, about any aspect of the process post-qualification. All right, so before I begin, um, I'll give you an overview of what we're gonna discuss today. So I'll show you some tools to better understand the NACA interest rate buy down. While doing that, I'll discuss the NACA products, the 15 year mortgage and the 30 year mortgage. I'll discuss the NACA workbook and the tools inside of the workbook, the purchase workbook, including the buy down chart. NACA.com and the NACA mortgage calculator using the buy down chart. Priority members, non-priority members, priority community, non-priority communities, and how to figure out which you are, which of those you are. Um, and then we'll discuss the web file a bit. So um, if somebody can just answer the question box, can you guys hear me okay and see my screen okay? All right, very good, thank you. So I'm gonna start off by taking you to where to find tools that you can use throughout the entire process. The NACA website is very detailed. So it can sometimes be difficult to find the tools within it. Of course, you guys have figured out how to schedule a webinar. If you go to purchase, purchase resources. So I'll take you through a few of these. But we'll start off and, and open up purchase resources. If you've qualified, if you're already NACA qualified, hopefully you've been to a Thursday night NACA purchase workshop where you were given a purchase workbook. So I'm gonna go back and show you where I, where I got that from. I went to www.naca.com. I went to purchase across the top. I dropped down to the very bottom and went to purchase resources. In those resources are great documents, you know, an overview of the NACA process, the qualification workbook, hopefully you're past that point and you've already become qualified, qualification workbook in Spanish, the purchase workbook, which we're looking at now, the hot PHA, so members who are using home ownership assistance vouchers from a public housing authority, appraisal disputes, so instructions on if the appraisal came in low, you believe the appraiser did not do a good job of using the correct comps, the correct property, et cetera. Um, but we're gonna focus today on the purchase workbook. Again, this is that white workbook that you would have received in the Thursday night. But in case you didn't receive it, or if you're using an, in, an agent, a real estate agent, who's not familiar with NACA, I would strongly urge you to make sure your agent not just reads this book, but studies it. Um, if you don't, if you're not, if you're not already signed an agent, or you don't already have one, I would definitely recommend you use an agent very familiar with the NACA program. The things I'm going to talk about today, you know, require a pretty, a pretty good understanding of the NACA process 
So agents, in-house agents, referral agents, agents who have done a lot of deals with NACA tend to have smoother process. If you're working with an agent who's not an in-house referral agent, you can work with any agent you want. You just make sure that you pass on the information from today you re or you require your agents to attend some of the webinars and certainly that they really get a great understanding of this book so that you have the best process possible. I'm going to go right down to page six. Well, let's start here. I'll start, I'll start on th page three and go over kind of a broad view. So we're going to talk about NACA interest rate buy down. When you read it, go ahead and, um, and read page three. The, the basic thing to know about interest rate buy down. So with the NACA product, you have no, you have no required down payment, lender paid closing cost, So if, here we go, um, lend to paid closing costs. So anything that you get from the seller for seller concessions, any money you've saved beyond taxes, insurance, per diem interest, you can apply towards interest rate buy down to permanently reduce your payment or increase how much house you can buy for the same payment. So when you became NACA qualified, the focus is not on the dollar amount your your of house you qualified for. Your focus needs to be on the payment that you qualified for, because in different markets with different tax rates with different insurance. Webinar, you have entered as an attendee in listen only mode. So the dollar amount that you qualified for, say you qualified for a $1,500 payment per month, that's going to translate to different purchase power depending on the property taxes. If there's a homeowners association that you have to include, insurance, if there's a house that's a newer construction closer to a fire hydrant, you know, that house, same square footage would have lower cost insurance than a older house, further from a fire hydrant, for example, if you need flood insurance and so on. And I'll get into the, how to figure out how to convert your exact qualification to the dollar amount of house it can buy. But um, it's probably important to discuss the interest rate buy down first, because that's how you're gonna get more buying power. On a 30 year mortgage, I'm talking about 15 and 30 years separate, on a 30-year mortgage, every 1% of your loan, not, not necessarily the purchase price, but the loan amount. So if you even if you buy a $200,000 house, but you borrow $180,000, 1% of the loan amount is $1,800, not $2,000. So on a 30-year mortgage, every 1% of the loan amount buys down permanently 0.25% off the interest rate. How do you know what your interest rate is? Any anytime you can go to www.naca.com and on the home page it'll tell you your 30 year and your 15 year interest rate. The interest rate locks or is set when your property identified. So when you bring your contract or upload your contract to your mortgage counselor and they complete the data entry for the address, loan amount requested, and approximate and price for the house, a loan estimate goes out that day and uses the interest rate for that day. The interest rate can change from day to day. This week, it stayed the same all week, 3.375. It's very risky, some people wait until um, they think the rate might go down and they wait to take to provide their application. Um, now, I wouldn't recommend that. It's very high risk because if the rates do go up, you'll end up with a higher rate and or you can delay the process um, if, if you have a contract close date that you have to meet um, to be able to close on time. 
But again, every 1% of the loan amount permanently reduces the interest rate by 0.25%. So for easy math, if today's starting rate was 3%, 3 and you were buying a $200,000 house, every $2,000 uh, $2, reduces the interest rate permanently by 0.25%. So if you put $2,000 towards a deal instead of 3%, you would get a permanent interest rate of 2.75%. $4,000 would you get you to 2.5%, $6,000, and so on. $8,000 to 2%, $10,000 to 1.75, ,000, all the way down. The lowest you can buy the interest rate down is 0.125%, so one eighth of 1%. On a 30 year mortgage, I'm sorry, a 15 year mortgage, interest rate buy-down is twice as impactful. So every 1%, not only do you start with a lower interest rate, so today, 30-year mortgage is 3.375, 15-year mortgage is 2.75, every 1% of the loan amount permanently buys down the interest rate a half a percent. So the same $200,000 house, if you were putting $2,000 down, You'd start with 2.75. You'd end up with a 2.25% interest rate. $4,000, you would end up with a 1.75% interest rate. $6,000, 1 1.25%, $8,000, 0.75%, $10,000 up front, buys you down to 0.25%. $11,000 because now you're down to the last eighth of a percent. So $11,000 up front would get you a permanent interest rate of virtually zero at 0.125% on a 15 year mortgage. If you go to the charts on page nine and 10, you can really get a sense of how to use the buy down. So on a 30 year mortgage, if we start with, and keep in mind this chart only includes principal and interest to understand how much you're gonna need for your full, full payment qualification, you have to make sure you add the taxes and insurance and I'll show you a tool for that. But just to compare apples to apples, on that same $200,000 house we're talking about, at a four and a half percent, interest rate, the principal and interest would be $1,013 a month. The same exact house, if the interest rate was bought down a half a percent, the interest, the principal interest payment would only be $598 per month. So significant savings by proactively doing an, basically what you're doing is you're prepaying your interest rate at a significant savings in overall money you're gonna pay in interest. I'm gonna come back to the NACA website and show you another tool to figure that out. So I've gone back to purchase. We're gonna purchase program. I'm gonna give this a second to load. Here you see some testimonials. So ah, clearly they bought their interest rate down. We haven't had one this low. So they bought it down to 1.5%. She so bought it to 2.25, 1 1.75, 0 0.063. 1%, 2.5%, 3%. 2.18, so people who've bought down their interest rate. Uh, at the bottom of this page is the NACA mortgage calculator. And it's unique because it has this field here for interest rate buy down. So I'll put some X's so you see which field I'm talking about. Has that field for interest rate buy down. And that's, that is gonna be unique to NACA. You have a couple of buttons up top. So you can enter your desired purchase price. If you know the house you're gonna buy 
and how much it costs. You'll focus on that and then use your buy down power to figure out how to get down to the payment that you qualified for. But for most people, they're going to focus on the payment so they can understand how much house they can go shopping for. So if you've qualified for a $1,500 payment, that's your principal interest tax insurance. It's very important that you talk to your real estate agent, your mortgage counselor, the settlement agent who you've chosen, you know, um, to find out what the tax rates are in your area. Most of the country, it's about 12 and a half, 12 and a half percent. In places like Long Island, some parts of New Jersey, Texas, they're up 30, 40 percent. Some parts of Georgia, Arkansas, other places, they'd be down to 6% and less. So the percentage you're paying on taxes has a huge impact on how much house you can buy. That's all in the bottom right for the same $1,500 payment. But I'm not quite ready yet because I haven't put in insurance payment. So since I'm sitting in Charlotte, North Carolina right now, I'll use approximate figures for Charlotte. Um, maybe $55 per month, if that, for insurance. 12 and a half is about right for the tax rate. So my $1,500 qualification buys me a $264,000 and change house. Not bad for Charlotte, North Carolina. But what if I know the house I want, I fell in love with it, and it's $280,000? I've already qualified for the 1500. I'm not going to qualify for more. I'm not comfortable paying more per month. I you know, I don't want to work two jobs to to maintain my mortgage. My counselor and I have had that conversation about my budget. I like my lifestyle where it is. I'm already paying close to that in rent. I understand I'm going to have additional costs as a homeowner to repair and maintain the house. So so a way to get to the 280,000, well, before I even start buying down, let me, let me show you something else on this that's really cool. On the bottom, if you click your amortization chart, and this is based on today's interest rate of 3.375. Notice that your first mortgage payment, and this is looking at your principal and interest that backed out the taxes and insurance, because it's looking at the amortization on principal and interest. So I initially borrowed $264,874. My first payment, $745 goes to interest and only $426 goes to principal. I will ultimately pay $156,000 in interest on this property. And of course, I'll repay the $264,874 in principal. Now, if I take the same property and I do a buy down, I've saved up $10,000. Now, if I add $10,000 to 264,874 to use it for a principal reduction, my same qualification would get me to a $274,874 house. But if I use it for interest rate buy down, it took me up to 289,314. So I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to 10,500 to get to even buy down. Now I can get that house for 200, 290,000. Now, the, the, the more interesting thing is look how much the interest that I'm going to pay over the life of the loan dropped. I went from over 150,000 to 121,000 spending 10,000 up front. So spending 120, now, now that would be spending 130,000, including the, the 10,000 up there. And it saved me about $25,000 over the life of the loan. So really take advantage of this chart. I've got a couple of questions in the box. Let me answer these before we move on. Do I happen to know the tax rate for Virginia? Most of Virginia, um, and it, it depends. There's different counties 
So Virginia doesn't have one state tax. They have city, county, and I believe some school taxes in parts of Virginia. But for most of the state, it's it's right around twelve and a half dollars per thousand. So twelve and a half percent. I don't understand my mortgage amount qualification. When I enter the information, it gives me a higher purchase amount. Deanna, if, um, here, let me, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. If I can, you're using a, a phone instead of a, so if you can unmute your phone, do you mind explaining that question a little bit more? Without giving any personal information, See, I don't see my mortgage amount qualification. So what I used up here was the qualification amount. If I were not doing any buy down, I would just use this calculator to tell me how my qualification converted to how much house I can buy. But I'm going to have to guess a little bit because I don't know the property yet. on my monthly insurance. So talk to your real estate agent, you know, they'll have a sense of, and your, and your mortgage counselor, they'll have a sense of how much an insurance policy in your area costs. I just happen to know off the top of my head because you know, owning a home in Charlotte, that, you know, my, my homeowner's insurance policy is about $660 per year. It's about what I paid for the house. So, um, so I'm guessing, again, you know, new construction, sometimes it's a bit less. Um, larger houses are more, you know, houses with very expensive build materials are more and so on. All right, when I use the mortgage capsule, it does not match the qualification form given. That, that, that's gonna be true. In many cases, the calculator might, might not match it because your qualification form may have a different estimate for monthly insurance, may have a different tax rate. And the day you qualified, the interest rate might've been different and it's basing it off of that interest rate. That's why it's so important to use this calculator here because you're, this puts you in the driver's seat of adjusting because before you make an offer on a house, you can actually, in, in every jurisdiction in this country, uh, property taxes are a matter of public record. So if you want to know what I pay in property taxes, all you have to do is go on to the Mecklenburg County website. It's called Polaris. Type in my address or my name as the homeowner, and you can see what I paid for my house, what I pay in property taxes. Um, and the, and the public information about the property. That's true for everyone in the country. So you might realize sometimes, you know, we have a house that's worth a lot of money, but the tax assessment is much lower. So you'll have to qualify for a lower tax assessment. Now, when that happens, truly prepare yourself for your taxes going up in the first few, few years of home ownership. Um, and vice versa. Sometimes your tax assessment is very high, way over what you're paying for the house, and you might be eligible for some kind of homestead exemption that the previous owner didn't have, they were an investor, or a school exemption, meaning you don't have kids school age, so you're gonna get a tax break and so on. There's a lot of ex uh, tax exceptions out there. You're gonna have to qualify on the current tax bill. So what I'm saying about this is you can always get the current tax bill. So say I know the current tax bill and the taxes are not 276 a month, but 220 a month. I can just start adjusting the rate till I get to 220 so that it's a little bit too far so that it converts to my mortgage. So that's why um, Deanna and others, you, it, you might not see the exact figures on this calculator tax rates, insurance. So maybe I'm buying an older or bigger house, $75, it really changed how much. Maybe I'm buying a condo. So my insurance will be a bit lower. Might be 20 bucks for my 
H06 policy or contents policy, but then I have to pay $150 a month in my homeowners association, and that really dropped how much I can qualify for. All right, looks like we've got a couple of questions. What if I qualify for 100,000, but I wanna buy a home for 60,000? Then you are awesome because you're gonna save a ton of money. Um, what else you could do, if you qualify for more than the house that you're interested in, you can do what's called a rehabilitation loan. And you know if, if you need to do work to that house, if you wanna make sure the roof, you're not gonna to have to spend money on it in the next few years, um, or HVAC system, plumbing, if you need to do some kitchen upgrades because the house is outdated, um, you have the option in that case of still borrowing $100,000 because you qualified for it, buying the house for $65,000 and, and using $35,000 as a repair escrow so that after you close, you can turn that house into the house of your dreams. Very good question. What is the difference between buy down amount and down payment buy down so so let's let's look at that together i'm going to take out the hoa just because it's easier to see the math so a buy down when you do interest rate buy down it does not change how much money you're borrowing for the house it changes how much interest you're going to pay over time so if i do a buy down on this property or in this payment, $1,500 per month, it's going to increase how much house I can buy. A principal reduction reduces how much money I'm borrowing, but keeps the interest rate the same. So let's look at it using, using the same calculator. Give me a second, I'm refreshing, I'm gonna start it over. So I qualify for 1500 a month. I'm gonna keep do the tax rate of 12 and a half, 55 dollars for insurance. And I'm going to, so I qualify for a 264,804 dollars house, and I'm gonna put ten thousand dollars in principal reduction. Well, what did that do? That said, okay, instead of two hundred sixty-four thousand eight hundred and seventy-four dollars. Now you can buy 274,000, $874. Now I move that print reduction over to interest rate buy down and it has to buy a whole a half point so it'll adjust it for me. Now I'm not buying a 274,000 with the same amount of money or a little bit less in this case. I'm not just going up by 10,000, I'm going up by 25,000. Now I'm all the way up at 289,314. Interest rate buy down has much more of an impact on how much house you can buy than principal reduction. Principal reduction has an impact on how much a loan you take out. So if you don't have enough money for buy down now, it's a great question. I always get this crazy question, but you'd like to do more of the mortgage payment. So two different questions in here. If you don't have enough money for interest rate buy down now, can you do a buy down later? Um, you have to do the buy down uh, before closing. If you have a new construction and you save money during the build, you can add to your interest rate buy down. You can't, so you can, you can request and work with your counselor to do what's called the change of circumstance and do additional interest rate buy down. If it's an existing construction, you probably don't have time because you have to redisclose every time you buy down and that adds 11 days to your closing time. So you don't have time to change your mind more than once in the existing construction. Hopefully that answered. Um, if not, please, I'm keen more. Let's see. Ah, some great questions out here. Um, so what if I don't have the money now to buy down, but I feel like my income is going to go up? Is it a wise idea to make extra payments on the mortgage payment? Absolutely. 
like you saw on the amortization chart, what happens with a mortgage, when you change the balance owed by making extra payments, it permanently reduces how much interest you're going to pay in the life of the loan. So that's excellent plan B. I personally do it. Every month I make extra payments on my mortgage so that I reduce how much interest. So I'm killing my principal and I'm reducing how much interest I'm going to pay. It doesn't change my minimum payment, but what it's going to do is it's going to change how quickly I pay off a loan. So you can, if, if you're worried about taking a 15 year loan, but you really want to pay off a loan in 15 years, and you're worried about taking a 15 year loan because you know you feel like maybe something might happen with your job, you want to take, you want to be obligated to a lower payment, but you can afford more, absolutely make the extra payment. So you can do the math or have have one of us do the math for you, and we can tell you how much you would need to pay. And there's calculators online. Um, bankrate.com has a good one for this, where you can tell it you're in a 30 year mortgage, but but say I want to pay it off in 20 years, I want to pay it off in 15 years. Or, you know, you might figure the number of years before you want to retire and say, I want to have my house paid off before I retire. It'll tell you exactly how much extra to pay per month or exactly how much to pay per month to have it paid off in a much faster time. So that's certainly an option. And then, no, there's not a prepayment penalty. So another great question is, if I pay my mortgage off early, do I have to pay a penalty for that? It's called a prepayment penalty. No, there's no prepayment penalty on NACA mortgages. So again, extra payments to the mortgage, pay down the principal immediately when you make it, so you owe less, and it reduces how much interest you're going to pay over the life because every time you make an extra payment, the next monthly statement that comes out, your mortgage re-amortized, meaning it, the, when you make your payments as set up over 30 years, it's calculating each month your reduction in principal. But if you make an extra reduction in principal, you don't owe as much interest because you only, because it recalculates every month based on the principal you owe that month. All right. Let's see, make sure. Can you tell the questions? Can you explain more about? Ah, um, yes. Yeah, so, so, can I explain more about the renovation loan? I'm not going to talk a whole lot about the renovation loans because we actually have a, a couple of webinars for that. So, if you don't mind, I'm going to show you here. But I, if you have specific questions about rehab loans, um, I'll be happy to answer them. But we have two webinars. We have um, one at Wednesday. That's Rehab Project Overview, which discusses rehab loans. And we also have one on Tuesdays, and these are at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Property Qualification Steps from the Hand Department. So we have experts from our neighborhood, Home and Neighborhood Development Department who can answer questions probably better than I um, about the rehab process, but I'll be happy to answer anything specific. Um, let's see any more questions when do we address buy down I think I addressed that um, when you take your mortgage application so your loan estimate's not going to have the buy down yet when you sit down with your counselor to do credit access you'll address it then and then if you want to buy down more before you close you can certainly request you know and then your mortgage counselor will let you know, okay, it'll, it'll, we're going to add 11 days to how long it'll take to close. But, you know, but you can certainly buy down more. Ah, with the lender match program. Okay. Um, um, Barbara knows her stuff. I'm, you're getting a little bit ahead of me, Barbara. I'm going to show you the lender match program pretty good. I'm going to show you a couple of different lender programs. All right. Um, so I will definitely come back to that. And if I, if I leave any questions unanswered, please talk about the purchase workshop and the purchase workshop. Where can we register for the workshop? Okay. So there's the NACA workshop, which is the home buyer workshop and the purchase workshop. You do it right here at the NACA website. So this is the home page. You can do it from here. 
search locations. So I want to see what they have going on within 25, let's say 50 miles. English workshop. So, wow, Charlotte seems busy. And I'd say even if they're full, you can you can show up because there's often room. So if I go back to the NACA website, so you again home page. Purchase program. And we could have done it from here, purchase program, and it would take you the same, same information. You can do it from here also, where you're gonna search getting started. So I'll take you there again. So the NACA website, you can just scroll down till you see purchase program. Put in your zip code. That's my house is I grew up in. Search locations. And I'll show you all the workshops they're having that you can sign up for. Hopefully that answers your question. But feel free to stay on this call and learn a little bit about what happens. All right. My offer on a property accepted on Friday. We'll cross our fingers for you. When did the two days start for the required home inspection? Right away. So it's a great question. You should get the inspection right away. Now it's a holiday weekend. Inspectors not might not be available. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't happen this weekend. Just the sooner you get the inspect inspection, the sooner the hand department is able to review it, work with you to see if there's required repairs, recommended repairs, or both. Um, if you're 15 days into the process and the hand department has not made that determination yet, it can delay your closing. We are currently at a pace where once you take your full application package, it takes about 25 days at bank to get your loan closed. So, you know, you know, I don't want to say you absolutely have to get it done in two or three days because that's just unrealistic in some cases. But just understand that any any part of the process that gets delayed, it can delay the entire process. Um, Aren't those nice? So the purchase workshop, okay, I see. So that was the home buyer workshop. The purchase workshop is in your local LACA office, 6 p.m. every Thursday evening. So 6 p.m. on Thursday, if you've been LACA qualified, you can just go to the office, your local office, and have the purchase workshop. Right, so you, huh? Same question back to back. Yes, so it's my ask, can the rate at contract change by the time the closing comes? It can't change between contract and closing. It can change between the day you sign the contract and the day you get your contract over to the NACA counselor to upload it and set your rate. Once the NACA counselor does a data entry on the contract you give them, your rate gets set. It will not change now. Now you can change it, you can lower it between the time you sign the contract and closing by doing an interest rate buy down, but it's not gonna go up. Your rate, as long as we register your loan accurately, your rate will not change for 360 days. So if today you set your rate at 3.375 and you get a credit and income approval or decision, it's a new construction, it takes, you know, there's construction delays and it takes almost, a, uh, you know, it takes 10 months to build. You will still get your 3.375 interest rate, even if rates 10 months from now are up at five and a half percent. 
Um, so yes, Victoria, you do have to attend the workshop um, and you know, get NACA qualified, attend the second purchase workshop and go out shopping to get the terms of the NACA program, 0% down, lender paid closing cost. You know, no, no consideration of credit score and so on. All right, can you use my purchase price? <laughs> I can, but and I'll show you, know, and I'll show you on this one. But the idea of me showing you the tool was so that you can. So I'm going to switch over to purchase price. That's what I'm being asked to do. So I'm going to do desired purchase price, one fifty eight nine hundred. Has an insurance about wow. about $90 a month and you're saying taxes are pretty low at $90 a month also. Okay. And you have $9,000 to work with. The best way is definitely to use your 9,000 to buy down the interest rate. So if your total is 9,000, make sure you save money for reserves, you know, your insurance policy, et cetera. So if you put 7,000 towards interest rate buy down, you'd get your payment all the way down to $792 per month. That is just amazing. That's less than average rent in most markets. Um, Kay, if that didn't answer, please shoot, shoot more questions. I'll be happy to, oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, what happens when you type your zip code and no workshop pops up? You know, you can extend the area, but like I said, I went through this program twice. I started in 2003. They said the workshop was full. I showed up anyway. I had no problems. Um, so if you really want to push it, show up anyway. Otherwise, you can expand your your search, you know, add miles to it because ask you how many miles away. You know, maybe we are willing to go 50 miles, 75 miles. Um, there might be another workshop in the area. You can look at your next closest office. I happen to sit in Charlotte. The Columbia office is, only, is less than an hour away. So I might look at the workshops out of Columbia and so on. How long does it take to do, for the MC to upload the contract? It should be uploaded within 24 hours of receipt. Uh, if you have a problem with the MC uploading contract, of course, contact their office manager, uh, their office director, or their regional director, and, and they'll give assistance. Does NACA for seller assist go towards a credit towards purchases in the home? New, new appliances ex example. Uh, seller assist would go towards interest rate buy down. Um, can a seller, a seller can buy new appliances, put it in the house for you? Um, so you would use this seller assist to go towards interest rate buy down, and then you would do a repair escrow to have the money to do the upgrades to the to the kitchen in this case. Um, we talk about appliances. Once the bank receives the application for the loan, it can take twenty five days to close. What is the max amount of that buy down points for the buyer? Um, I'm going to answer that question in a second about maximum buy down for the buyer. So very good. All right. Looks like we got all these questions answered. So let me take you to another website that you're going to learn a lot of very important things about. So I'm going to now take you to the FFIEC websites. Do new build, do builders for new home, Construction offers seller assist. Most Cynthia, yes. Builders typically offer a lot of seller assist, um, depending on the market. Um, you know, that's be better a question for your real estate agent in the market you're in. But I see tens of thousands of dollars coming from builders in most markets in this country, and and it's a you know it's a great seller assist to put towards buy down. All right. So if you guys would just write this down, and I'll show you. It's in your workbook also. So we have that workbook. So this is your purchase workbook.
So if you go to page seven, it has the website and the information I'm going to give you. So if you forget, just remember it's on page seven of your workbook. And if you saw what I just did, I used it as a PDF. I remembered FFIEC and did a quick search for it. But if I just Google FFIEC, and if you've ever been here before, it's, it's an awesome website. Um, the FFIEC is the Federal Financial Institutions Examination Council. And they were commissioned to, to collect awesome amounts of data, mostly surrounding the, Q the Community Reinvestment Act, where lenders have, have to identify metropolitan statist statistical areas and they're given credits by diversifying their lending to low and moderate income people. So basically, with the CRA um, Act does, is it tells lenders you can't just lend to wealthy people in a community, you have to diversify it. So the Community Reinvestment Act, or CRA, forces them to identify metropolitan statistical areas. So I'm gonna go, so I clicked on the geo-tracking, and now you can figure out the metropolitan statistical area that you're purchasing in. You can figure out the median income and it's going to show you, that means 50% of people make more, 50% of people make less. Then you can figure out some of our lender grants. So I'm going to talk about all three of those while using this screen. So if I put in an address, I've been using, when I first came through NACA in 2003, I bought a house at 9320, my wife and I, Hay Wayne, H-A-Y-W-A-I-N, Court. That was in Charlotte. North Carolina. Instead of typing in Charlotte, North Carolina, I could have just typed in the zip code, if you know it. So if everybody can see, I typed it in across the top and I hit search. When I hit search, it dropped a little ball right on that house. The blue lines that you see, each one of those represents a census tract neighborhood. Now, metropolitan statistical area can be made up of a million people and more, a lot of households. Each census tract neighborhood is made up of maybe 3,000 households or so. So when I come up here and click on get a census demographic, demographic data, I can see what all, what all has. So this particular tract, so inside these blue lines, the, the population, so the tract, population is 4,770 people. So I went over to population. In the census tract data, and then I can look at certain things. I can see that the percentage of minorities in this tract are about 80%. I can see that the income, the percentage of median income versus the greater MSA is 93%. So you're gonna to wanna to focus on this figure. So the name of the census tract is Charlotte, Concord, Gastonia, North and South Carolina. And the median income for this census, for this census tract is $70,700. That means the average household makes or 50% of the households make 70,700 or more, 50% make 70,700 or less. If you're buying a house, somebody said they can't see my screen. Are you guys able to see my screen right now? Okay, very good. That means if, if your, if your application income, 
So when you apply for the loan, if your income is $80,000, you are a non-priority member. If your application income is below $70,700 and you're buying in this particular metropolitan statistical area, then you're a priority member. What does that mean? A non-priority member can only buy in a priority community. What is a priority community? Priority community is a community in a census tract like this one, where the six box down is less than 100. So one, two, so you can count boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six. You go down to the tract, median family income percentage, and it's less than 100. So even if my application income is more than 70,700, I can buy in this community because this is a priority community. So non-priority members can only buy in priority communities. Priority members can buy anywhere that fits within their affordability. So I'm gonna scroll out a little bit and look around Charlotte more. Maybe I don't wanna buy in Northeast Charlotte and I wanna buy somewhere else. If you look to the left of the screen where I'm highlighting everything and then go down a bit, there's a little box. If you check that box because you don't know the specific address you wanna buy in, you just wanna know if you can start shopping neighborhoods, go ahead and check that box and then just click in a different census tract. If you notice, it dropped a little ball down there and a new box appeared census demographic data for this new neighborhood. So when I pull that up, it says this median income is 25%. So I can buy there too, even if I'm non-priority. And check it out. Look how close that is to Uptown. The reason why the reason why it's so low median income even though it's so close to uptown, I'll move it over so you can see it better, is because there's a lot of apartment complexes close to uptown and a lot of lower income people. The houses in this neighborhood are very expensive. But now let me get a little further from uptown and click down here. Now my new median income is 134%. If I'm a non-priority member, I cannot buy a house in this neighborhood. So if my income is above 70,700 for the application, which you see here, I cannot buy in this neighborhood because the six box down is above 100. Now, the NACA program offers two grants. So, so that's prior, before I move on, that's priority and non-priority. So let me answer any questions. And if there are any more questions about priority and non-priority, please ask them now because I'm gonna move on from that an MSL price, I think you meant MLS price is 425,000. Can I submit multiple property specific letters for the same property at different, of course, absolutely. So can you, so you wanna know, can you ask your MC while you're getting your property specific letter to produce one for 425,000, 400,000, 410,000, 405,000, 415, because you're going to, because you don't want to have to keep getting new letters, but you want to start with them thinking you only qualified 400,000, make that offer, and hopefully they take it. If they don't take it, well, you come right back and say, all right, then will you take 405 and so on? Absolutely, you could do that. And it's a clever thing to do. You know, never show your hand to an agent or a seller. They're going to spend all your money. So, if, so, if, if you've qualified for 430,000, they're gonna charge you 430,000. I can't say that uh, you know, as a matter of fact, but the, theoretically they're going to. All right, um, are there other benefits removed from non-priority members? Now, that's the only thing. It's, um, this program is focused on and here for low and moderate income people and people buying in low and moderate income communities. And we want you know, higher income people buying in low and moderate income communities creates economic diversity, makes for neighborhood stabilization, so it's excellent. Um, 
but that's the only restriction for priority and non-priority. Now I'm gonna talk about some grants in a moment that by definition, priority members are not gonna be eligible for these grants, but that's the only restriction we have. All right, so I'm non-priority, approved for way more than what I wanna spend. Good for you. Um, every house I find is not in my census area. The one house I found in my area is way more than I wanna spend. It can be challenging finding a house in the area you want um, if you're non-priority and we get that. Um, what I would say to you is put your real estate agent to work. That's what they're there for. Challenge them to find a house in the area you wanna be in for the price you're comfortable paying or the monthly mortgage payment you're comfortable paying. And if they can't and you can't, then now's not the time to buy. Or if you're a non-priority member, you know, you can consider it. You should consider other financing. You know, um, other conventional loans, you know, you have to pay down payment and closing costs. You're not going to get the same interest rates probably. But, you know, if you're not, if you're non-priority, I think, you know, the idea for NACA is just to make sure you don't get a predatory loan and that we help you along the way. You know, NACA, the NACA product itself, while the best mortgage um, option may not be your only mortgage option as a priority member. But I would say, you know, don't buy something you're not going to be happy with or buy in a neighborhood that you're not comfortable with um, just to use NACA because, you know, it's all about your happiness and your success in home ownership. All right. What is the basic definition of priority and non-priority? Well, that's the definition. Priority is the application income is below the metropolitan statistical area income. Non-priority, the application income is above. If you are you non-priority, if it's 102%, yes, anything over 100%. Is there room for 2%? Probably not. It depends on any other compensating factors in your file. So there's two great grants that you can qualify for. You don't even have to do an application for um, that just come with the NACA Bank of America product. The first grant, so there's a law called Homeownership and Equity Protection Act, HOPA. And I'm not going to get into the awesome, gruesome details of it because it's pretty comprehensive and very few of us have read all the um, ins and outs of it, but um, I happen to know it pretty well. In a nutshell, banks don't want to do what's called high cost loans. Bank of America does not want to. So the way the law reads is a borrower can only spend 5% of the transaction amount as cost to the mortgage. Interest rate buy down, even though it benefits you tremendously, is a cost on the mortgage. So you can only spend 5% on the transaction amount plus two bona fide discount points. Well, it also goes on to say, even if you're not paying the origination fee, NACA gets paid a $3,000 origination fee on your loan. That's all NACA gets out of the deal. You know, your real estate agent makes 3%, usually, sometimes two and a half. Um, but in the entire transaction, NACA gets $3,000. The lender pays it, you don't. Um, so that 3000 has to come from the 5% plus two bona fide discount points. In a nutshell, for most people, it ends up being that you can only do about five and a half discount points. So you can only buy your interest rate down 1.375%, meaning you can only remove 1.375% off the rate. So if you're a non, if so if you do not qualify for the grant, the lowest interest rate you could buy yours down to with your money is 1.375. For the HOPA grant though, seller money doesn't matter. The seller can give you another 
five and a half discount points or five and a half, or in this case, 5% and you can buy it all the way to the floor. So you bought it down to 1.375. The seller can now contribute and you would end up with a 0.125% interest rate if the seller contributed five more points. So for the HOPA grant, the seller's funds does not count towards the Home Ownership and Equity Protection Act. To qualify for the grant, you must be 80% or less of the median income for the metropolitan statistical area you're buying in. So your application income in this case, since it's 70,700 times 0.8. If your application income is $56,560 or less, you automatically qualify for this grant. So it's the Home Ownership and Equity Protection Act grant and you automatically qualify for it. So anything you're doing, and I'm, and I'm estimating because the math is fairly complicated, any discount points out of your pocket and you can get another grant. So sometimes a member will get a grant, a first time home, home buyer grant for $10,000. You put the $10,000 from another grant that counts as your money, you will get matched dollar for dollar, everything over that five and a half discount points as a principal reduction on your loan. And that's the hope of grants my asked about earlier. Another grant, same qualification criteria in terms of 80% of the median income. This one is called a low and moderate income borrower rate reduction grant. Only the metropolitan statistical areas on my screen now are eligible for it. So Phoenix, um, a lot of areas of California, California uh, New Haven and Bridgeport in Connecticut. Um, Savannah is the only area in Georgia. Um, a fair amount of DC and Maryland, um, a fair amount of Texas and so on. So you know, if you look at my screen, in front of you and your counselor can help you with this. So the way this grant works is the same. So there's three criteria, of, well, four criteria for this grant. One, you're 80% or below the median income. Two, you're purchasing in one of these metropolitan statistical areas. Three, no matter where the money comes from, you can only reduce it, the, the interest rate by an additional five discount points. And four, you can't combine this in the HOPA grant. What this grant does for the asking, it takes no application from you. If you qualify for it, you automatically start with an interest rate of half a percent below today's interest rate. So if today's interest rate, which it is, is 3.375, Instead of you getting an interest rate starting at uh, 3.375, you would get an interest rate starting at 2.875. You can then buy five discount points from that using seller's money, your money combination, a third party grant to get the interest rate to 1.625. You cannot go lower than that because you can only add five discount points to the low moderate income borrow grant. Let's see if there's any questions. Let's see if I can see. I got that. Can someone get a NACA? Can someone get a NACA approval with no credit history? Apps, so no credit card history. Absolutely, you can get it. NACA considers no credit good credit, and this is the way I explain to people: if you have a friend who has a perfect payment history on ten credit cards with twenty thousand dollars balance on those 10 credit cards and they have a 750 credit score you have no credit cards you don't owe anybody anything and you have a 650 credit score to me you're the better customer you didn't even need to borrow money to get where you are that person needed to borrow you know all that money on the credit cards to get where they are no credit is good credit all right let's see who's The amount that determines if we are high or low priority, is that combined income or per, per person? That's combined application income. 
So these metropolitan statistical area median incomes, as you saw, are based on households, not individuals. So 50% of the households make 70,700 or more in this particular metropolitan statistical area. What about New York? I'm guessing you're asking about um, this grant. Um, New York is on here. So you have New York, which that's, that covers New York City, White Plains, even Nassau County is on here, up in Buffalo is on here, um, parts of New Jersey, um, Jersey City. So yes, much of New York. So just you have to, don't forget, you have to plug the address you're buying into this bar. So let me put in C-N-T-R-E. I just put in the address for the NACA National Office, as I know off the top of my head. That took me to a completely different metropolitan statistical area. That's the Boston MSA, even though it's in Roxbury. And that median income is significantly different. The median income for people who live in the Boston area or households are 105,500. All right. Either information. That's correct, Barbara. You can't do both grants. But I find that people who have the resources to buy the interest rate down to the floor, 0.125, don't take the rate reduction grant because say you're buying a $200,000 house, you only get two discount points equivalent off of it at the value of $4,000. But if you're buying the interest rate all the way down, you're gonna get a match on your money to probably closer to twelve or thirteen thousand dollars, so usually it's better to, um, if you're doing more than five points, and have the resources, it's usually better to get the HOPA grant. How long is qualification good for? Excellent question. One hundred twenty days, and yes, you have to continue doing um, payment shock through closing. How do I spell that grant name? So the first one, it's HOPA, H-O-E-P-A. The second, low and moderate income borrower, so L-M-I-B. So just HOPA, H-O-P-A, or L-M-I-B grants. Yes, each discount point um, reduces the rate permanently by 0.25% on a 30-year mortgage and by 0.5% on a 15-year mortgage. Sorry, did you say if opting for the half point reduction? That's correct. If you opt for the half point reduction, you can only buy five additional points regardless of the resources to buy the points. So it doesn't matter if it's seller's money, your money combination. Are all of the grants only available to households below the 80? The, yes, the, the two built-in grants we're talking about are only available to households 80% of median income or less, but that does not mean there's not a tremendous number of grants that you can qualify for in your jurisdiction. These just happen to be NACA Bank of America grants that cover the entire, you know, cover the areas for the low moderate income bar grant that I showed you and the entire country for the HOPA grant. There are several other grants that contribute money towards interest rate buy down in, in several different markets absolutely get aggressive about finding out if you can qualify for them. A lot of the grants I've seen allow you to go up to 125% of the median income. So most of them allow 125%. Most of them require you to live in the property for a certain amount of time, which NACA does also. Um, so most of them are neighborhood stabilization grants and they're very much in line with the program. Are there any additional incentives for non-party members? No. The only incentive for non-party members is the NACA terms. The starting with a lower interest rate, no down payment required, lender paid closing costs. Um, we don't use credit score and so on. So it's the NACA product itself that, that is the incentive. 
how long do you have to live in your pro property by NACA guidelines? We expect you to live in the property five years at least to stabilize in the neighborhood. You cannot, there's no, there's no way to use the program um, in the same three year period. Um, generally, there's not a way to use it in the same five year period, meaning if you want to sell the house and come back through the program. Um, and we put a security instrument, we put a lien against the property in case you try to rent out the property over that time. Um, we're discussing prorating the $25,000 lien at $5,000 or 20% per year so that if you leave in less than the five years, you'll pay back um, that prorated portion. That's not in, in effect yet. I point that out because you ask a very good question. How long do you have to live in the house? We expect you to live in, in it for at least five years. We understand you know, that life circumstances can change. So you might have to move across the country. That's fine. You know, we're not going to make you pay us back if you know, we, we look at everything case by case. If something happens and your circumstances changes and you had the best of intentions of staying in the property. But if we do discover that you're using it as an investment property and that was your intention, then absolutely we'll, we will implement the lien and, and you'll, you'll end up paying the $25,000 back. All right, that covers the, that series of questions. Let me take you back to the NACA website for a second. Just before I take any more questions before we run out of time, I do wanna make sure everyone knows how to use their NACA web file. So in this process, you're able to address lender conditions um, NACA credit access conditions. You can provide us your insurance policy. I mean, using the web file makes this process infinitely more efficient. So I'm just gonna put in a, a sample file just to give you a sense. Okay, so this one's just setting up um, so just getting started, so it doesn't have all the features from when you're at banks so when you have sample file to work with. Um, but please take, take advantage. Uh, in your NACA, in your NACA, um, there we go. So in your NACA web file, you're able to see what's already completed what's yet to be completed, move to previous steps. Once you finish everything for that step, it'll allow you to go on. It shows you what's not done. It shows you how to keep doing it. So I'm working pretty fast in here, but you can just keep going through and it'll take you through all the different steps. So it shows you everything that you're not completed to get through the qualification process. And it does the same thing after you qualified it and you're in the mortgage process. It'll show you your lender conditions It'll allow you across the top, it has a little button for upload documents and allow you to update, load your, your insurance policy. It'll allow you to meet lender conditions without waiting for your counselor. So you can see your lender conditions. You can lender ask for a legible W-2, for example, for 2018. You say, okay, I have that. You can give it to the lender directly and really facilitate and manage your own process with the NACA web file. All right, that's, I'll, I'm gonna give you a couple of notes to think about, then I wanna, then I'll use up the rest of the time answering questions. That's a basic, very high level um, discussion of the tools at your disposal, how the interest rate buy-down works, how the grants work, priority and non-priority members, using the FFIEC website, using your NACA web file that we do repair loan, rehab loans. So a couple of things to think about while you're out there shopping. 
a lot of us move residents while we're shopping because we don't want to sign new leases. Um, very important if you do that, you contact your employer and your bank immediately and update, even if it's going to be a temporary residence, update your current address, even if it's at a hotel, even if it's mom's house, a cousin's house, um, wherever it is, update it with your employer and your bank. If you don't have at least one document with your current address on it, your file be, will be held in suspense until you can get that document. Typically, the fastest document you can get with an updated address is your pay stub because your employer, you know, we generally get paid biweekly. So it takes, if I tell my employer today, the next paycheck, they can have it updated and documented on it. Bank statement usually takes about a month to get an actual bank statement. And you probably won't have utilities in your name if you're living with mom or at a hotel or whatever. So don't forget to update your address with, uh, with your bank and your employer as soon as you move. Uh, gift letters. If, you're, if somebody's contributing money to you to help you buy down your interest rate or help you get this program, try to have them do it now or before your next bank statement comes out so that you don't have to document for the lender where that money came from. It's not the end of the world if you do, but you have to show the giver had the money to give you, meaning it coming out of their account, that it came into your account, and they have to provide a letter explaining that they gave you this money and it doesn't have to be repaid and what your relationship is. It has to make sense why somebody's giving you money. So, you know, a friend you just met giving you $10,000 to buy a house doesn't make sense. Mom giving you $10,000 to buy a house, well, that makes sense. Uh, again, I talked about homeowner's insurance. Please hop on that quickly. All right, let's see if we have any remaining questions before we wrap this up. Do you have a member of Bank of America? Do you, have a, oh, do you have to be a member of Bank of America to get those grants? No. If you're a member of NACA, the mortgage is going to go through Bank of America. And if you're eligible for the grants, you get them automatically. Should we upload hazard quotes for property being purchased prior to contract being signed? If you have them, okay, absolutely. The process at Bank of America to clear insurance is dreadful, to say the least. So even if you just have a quote, as long as that has the contact information for your agent on it, then give the quote because they'll contact your agent and make sure that they discuss with your agent exactly what has to be in the policy. So the collateral requirements, so the, the requirements to cover the collateral is the, is the property you're buying. That's the bank's collateral, meaning that's what they're protecting their money against, the value of the house. And insurance protects that collateral. The bank is going to require 100% replacement cost on the insurance. Of course, it's going to have to have the mortgagee clause on it. Um, and in some cases, it's going to require some additional types of insurance, like flood insurance, Florence flood insurance if it's in a flood zone, master insurance policy if it's a condo, or some planned urban developments where there's common areas and so on. So yes, the earlier you start the process with insurance, certainly the better. So here's a hypothetical somebody put out. Let's say I make 54,000, my wife makes another 80,000. Um, is it a good idea to work through NACA program with this income limit or is there a cap for income? There is no cap on income. Um, the only restriction with income is if the 54 plus 80 is above the metropolitan statistical area median income. So in this case it would be, but let's say you went out to now, there are some areas like Cambridge is pretty high, 115,000. Um, so you'd still be over that in this case. Um, DC has a very high income. So it depends on where you're buying. But um, so there's no income restrictions for using the program. But if your income is above the median income for the metro area, you have to purchase in a census tract neighborhood that's less than on that's less than 100 percent all right 
what is the timeline from bank application to closing? 25 days. Would you happen to know if all of Bank of America grants, the, the, again, the grants that are automatic are 80% of the median income? Um, the reason for that is because 80% is the threshold for a bank to get credit within the Community Reinvestment Act. But there are plenty of other grants out there that work with Bank of America and NACA that don't require you to be 80% or less. So find a house you like. And the walls are odd color. <laughs> I happen to be. The basement's unfinished. Can we still? Absolutely. You can close on the house. So um, this is a great question. Basically, your question is, can I do a repair escrow? So I'm going to answer a bunch of different questions in your very good question that you ask. Number one, can you buy a house that needs minor repairs? Absolutely. If it's not called on the lender appraisal and they're minor repairs, you can do them on your own after closing. Can you buy a house that needs repairs that you need to borrow the money to complete? As long as it fits within your qualification amount, like, like what's being described here, absolutely. So if you need to borrow money to have the house is painted because you're not going to paint the house, to have the basement finished, can you close, move in, then do the repairs? Absolutely. There's going to be your repair escrow held, meaning you're either going to borrow the money or give the money out of pocket. The bank's going to hold on to the money and the hand department's going to work with you to make sure the repairs are done correctly and we'll release the money when the repairs are done. That was the last question on the board. Does anybody have any other questions before we wrap up for the evening? Is it harder to get first time home buyer money if you're not part? No. Um, first time home buyer money is, they're different programs. Um, so in some cases, you know, it depends on the grants you're looking at. Some of them require you to be within 100% of median income for the MSA, some 125. Most of them are about 125. Um, and as you see, some 80. So it just depends on the what you're going for. Okay, after my own heart. The reason I ended up buying my house through NACA, my wife and I, we went to the city of Charlotte and applied for every home, first time home buyer grant that they had. We, we were not high income, but we didn't qualify for any of them. We said we would, they all said we're too high income to get money from Charlotte to buy a house. But the woman at the last place we went, she said, hey, there is this program where it doesn't matter what your income is. They just have the best deal and you're going to get a better deal than the grant money we would have gave anyway. And she directed us to NACA. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, I knew nothing about NACA. I was out there applying for grants trying to get free money. And the grant program sent me to NACA for the best deal. Can I put an offer on a home prior to attending a purchase workshop at the local office? No. Um, the, it, the credit access is likely to be rejected. You have to go to the purchase workshop, learn about um, the next steps. So, you know, I gave you some of the high level information. They're going to drill down into next steps um, specific to your market. I love NACA. I want to be a spokesperson. So do I, Kay. <laughs> I was going to say, after my own heart. I did not mean to work here 16 years. I just wanted to buy a house. And I was so excited about it. My wife and I kept doing the testimonials at the workshop. My wife said, I've been passionate about anything in years. Why don't I go work there 16 years later? I'm still here. I think I started working here, Kay, because I couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah, there's got to be a catch. You know, they, there's something I signed where they get my firstborn or something. So I think I was really wanting to get on the inside to figure out the catch. I'm still trying to figure out the catch 16 years later. Can we use a contractor that is certified and licensed and not a part of hand? Absolutely. You can use any contractor you want. Um, we'll just get them registered through the hand program. Um, you're very welcome, Stacy. Will I be able to will I be able to forward if I'm exhausting my funds for interest rate buy down? Like you said, don't um I answered saying we be able to move forward. Don't completely exhaust your funds. Make sure you have at least one month's reserves if you're buying a house, single family house, within $300 payment of your current housing payment. Two months reserves if you're self-employed 
I'm sorry, two months reserved. If your payment on your new house or in the house you're buying is going to be $300 or more than the rent you're paying now, three months reserved, reserves is one month's worth of payments. If you're self employed, four months reserves. If you're buying a duplex, five months reserves. If you're buying a three family house, and six months reserves if you're buying a four family house and or mixed use property. How can I look for a home? Put in the offer if I don't know my true buying power yet before buy down to grants. Um, those are the tools we offered you today. So if you look at um, the metropolitan statistical area, you can figure out if you qualify for the grant um, based on the income here and work with your counselor for your starting point. I have two months reserves plus buy down money. And the money you have for earnest money, that's your money. That's going to come back to you. So if you have that money plus your earnest money, um, it's not just 11000 for buy down. It's 11000 plus the 5000 for buy down that you're talking about. That will be it for my funds. Yeah, exactly. You know, again, don't completely deplete your funds. Uh, I could, you know, I could tell you stories. What I, the, you know, I, I came through NACA program in 2003. Years later, I sold that house and came back to NACA program because I was working here now. And I closed on the house, wanted to clean up the house thoroughly, and went to turn on the faucet outside the house, and it broke right inside the wall. Water gushing in the wall, had to take care of that. So the outside spigot broke. I, I'm actually pretty good. I, I turned off the water of the house. I'm pretty good at plumbing. I fixed it myself, thank goodness. I was exhausted, tired, went to take a shower in the house. My wife was still in our, oh, um, and we were renting. I went to pull the knob for the shower. The knob came completely out. The water came shooting out at me. So th things happen as a homeowner. If I did not have a few extra bucks to buy the plumbing tools I needed, or worse, if I couldn't do it myself and I had to hire a plumber, I would have been in real trouble if I didn't have reserves. You know, just make sure you have reserves. It's, it's really important. Um, and then some of us have, you know, might have had low credit scores um, coming through the program because we don't use credit score. You might have to pay a lot of money for utilities to get turned on. So, um, you know, it's just important. Um, I see you said, okay, a while ago. I know I probably overpitched that, but it's really important to have money in your pocket after you close. Home ownership is way more expensive than renting. Um, all right, I went to all the workshops in California where I did the purchase workshop. I have an offer on a home, proper specific letter. What can I do to be proactive with the NACA program? I'm not sure I fully understand. You did all the workshops. You have the proper specific letter. You know, just stay on top of your web file. Make sure you monitor your conditions thoroughly. Stay in touch with your counselor. They do what you're doing. You know, you're going, coming to the webinars, you're learning as much as possible, um, but just stay in touch with your counselor and utilize your web file. Probably the best things you can do. Get insurance earlier, like we talked about. Get insurance as early as possible, like we talked about. Um, work with the hand department, get your inspections as early as possible. Um, read and somewhat study the purchase workbook. Just want to thank you for your help. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, is earnest money the inspection. No, earnest money is money that you give to a seller to show that you're serious about making the purchase. As long as you meet the contract terms, if you don't close, so you, you do what's called contingencies. So when you give them earnest money, you might put a contingency, the house has to appraise. Good contingency put in there. So if the house doesn't appraise, you get your money back, you walk away you know, if you want to, um, but you get your earnest money back when you close. So it's the only money you really spend out of pocket in this process is for inspections. And that's the home inspection, not the appraisal inspection, the appraisal, the lender pays. Um, so earnest money is just money that you give to the seller to hold, or well, sometimes title company or, and, you know, it's really the agents who hold it or the title agent or settlement agent who holds it. 
to say you're serious about the purchase and you're not just making an offer and going to walk away and have nothing to lose. Try to contact a realtor in the red office without success. Um, all right, if you're having trouble, if you're trying to work with the NACA realtor and you're not having success, um, then you should reach out directly to the director of real estate at NACA. His name is Robert Torres and his email address. Make sure I have it right. Is, is Robert, R-O-B-E-R-T, Torres. So all one word. T, so Robert, R-O-B-E-R-T, T-O-R-R-E-S at N-A-C-A red.com at NACA red.com. Certainly we want to make sure you get excellent service from our real estate in all departments. Um, I'll show you how to use the dot again. So if you can see my screen, I'm highlighting this whole corner on the left just so you can look below it. So right below that is a little box. I'm going to check the box and then I can drop just using my left click on the mouse, drop it wherever I want. Yeah, it's a really, it's a great function that a lot of people don't know about. What's the difference in earnest money and down payment? Earnest money you get back, down payment reduces your loan amount. Can this recorded session be watched later? Great question. I've never watched it back again. I believe it can be. Um, I don't know the answer to that, unfortunately. Um, they are recorded, so there must be a way. I'm trying to think of who the best person to answer that question is. Um, I will pull up your email address from your NACA file using your name and email you the answer once I get the answer. Asking for my opinion here. Um, all right, I will do my best. Um, on out-of-pocket expense, from what you've seen, would it be wise to obtain the services of an architect before getting bids from contracted? No, um, it's a great question, by the way, Barbara. Good thinking. I don't know if I'd mess with an architect because the property is, a, you know, unless you're doing some kind of full-blown, full-gut rehab, exterior and interior. If I was doing an exterior rehab, I would definitely consult an architect, but not just an architect. So there's an architect and then there's structural engineers who actually make sure that the architect's drawings are physically sound. So you'd probably have to do both. I'm a huge, so, you know, I, I've never done a full-blown rehab exterior where I had, where I changed the exterior of the property. So I don't have the experience with that, but the hand department can answer that way better. Um, I don't see us using architects very often. Actually, I've only seen it once. Structural engineers are great to use. And certainly, you know, Barbara, you're gonna have to really get a contract that you can trust for a full-blown rehab. Hopefully that answered. Um, I wish I had more experience with it for you. How do they determine the earnest money? Um, you and your agent determine the earnest money. Only thing I'd say about earnest money is don't give more than you're comfortable. Um, basically, it depends on the market. So I've given as little as, as three hundred dollars earnest money, and as much as fifteen uh, three thousand earnest money um, on my last purchase. So. You know, it depends on how sure you are you're going to close and the, there's no hiccups and how aggressive the market is. This time of year, is the you guys are in the best place to be. There's no better time of the year to buy than holiday season. The sellers really need to sell. You know, anybody who doesn't need to sell kind of takes it off the market until spring. So we, I, I see the best deals ever between November and February. Will the MC know if we participated in this webinar automatically or do you need to contact them? Um, 
they won't know automatically. They will know based on the extra information you have. Um, this is not a required webinar. It's something I offer um, and we offer on Wednesday nights uh, um, to make sure anyone who's getting stuck in the process or needs direct answers to questions gets the answers to your questions. So um, I'm not sure if the MC even needs to know that you attended. This is really about you, the member. Myself, first one for nine, offer one for nine, nine. Ask for 4,000 in closing costs. Awesome, good job. Came back with 158.9 and agreed to the 4,000. Man, you did good. Sounds great. Yeah, sounds like, you know, um, okay, sounds like a good deal to me. Depends on your market. Um, like I said, this is a great time of year to buy a house. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is a great time of year to buy a house. Um, yes, that sounds like a good deal to me. And then depending on the market you're in, you got money down off the asking price, plus you got $4,000 to interest rate buy down. Leticia, that's very flattering. Leticia said she's done four webinars. This is the only one she found helpful. Um, hopefully that's saying something good about the other, this webinar and not bad about the others, but um, I'm glad it was helpful. Um, we have to pre-approve and go to home purchase first, right? Yes, you do need to get your qualification. I mean, this is, this is of course, good information for anybody, even when you're going through the qualification process. So you can think about interest rate buy-down, grants available, all that. Um, but yes, you definitely have to go through the qualification process before you start shopping to get the NACA mortgage. All right, and that looks like that was the last question of the evening. You Again, you guys have been a great audience. Um, happy to help, and hopefully I see you along the way and certainly hope to see you at the closing table. Um, thank you for your time and attention tonight and have a great rest of the evening and congratulations on your shopping process.